Hey everyone, it's Jason from Martial Arts Theater 3000. Today we're doing a video, uh, it's a collaboration with everyone in the Asian Cinema Circle. And in case you guys didn't know the members of the Asian Cinema Circle, we have AM Flip Reviews, Fanatical Dragon, Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society, Hong Kong Blu-rays, Film Fan Dojo, A Touch of Film, Cool Movie Gram, Flip Otaku, Invincible Asia, Them's Fighting Words, and Martial Arts Film Freak. And definitely go check out all their channels. They're great channels across the board, and you get to see their take on this video as well. This video being my top five Hong Kong fight scenes of all time. Coming in at number five, we have the amazing Wheels on Meals. What can you say about this fight scene? It really ushered in this Jackie's 80s period. Definitely one of his peaks here where he was just in top form. The movie's so, so good. Uh, Benny the Jet and, well, Benny the Jet was uh, a real kickboxer with like a 50 and 0 record or some amazing record. And Jackie loved going against him because he had the speed that he felt some other stuntmen and fighters didn't have. So he loved work with them on that level, but I did hear that he had some issues with Benny actually making contact um, at points, and you can see <laughs> that it seems like they're making contact at some points here. But the choreography is just so high-paced. It's The editing is just it's it's realistic in that you can see each move clearly a lot of the newer martial arts movies they have this editing style like that jason bourne style but where before a sequence is even completed it chops to the next one and this um now this isn't as like pulled back as some of the shaw brothers uh like the venoms the peking opera style where it's uh, you know like a two minute shot sometimes of just them performing without barely any edits at all before the next cut this just displays the martial arts so well the speed of it all the craziness where benny kicks a candle out and the ferocity i mean it's an amazing fight scene you got to see the whole movie but even if you haven't seen the movie and just go watch this scene on its own i won't be mad at you coming in at number four we have the finale of Heroes of the East. It's a Lao Karlong classic. You have Gordon Liu going up against Yosaki Karada. And the movie is so many fight scenes building up to this. And there's an animosity between the two of them, but there's also a respect on a certain level. And that emotional content that's in the background of this fight it really takes it up a notch and not to mention just the complete different styles with gordon leo of course represent chinese martial arts and yusaki with the japanese style and the ninjutsu style which is of course filled with stealth and lots of trickery now the neat thing about this scene is um gordon leo uses a lot of trickery of his own to counter the ninjutsu and it is just such a great cat and mouse scene with so many there's they they'll have dummies where you think gordon leo got stabbed or shot in the back with darts or i can't even remember all the weaponry there's so many weapons in this movie and that's the thing about this finale there's not only amazing weapon usage and great hand-to-hand -hand combat there's that like i said that level of stealth where you just don't know what's coming next you don't know where gordon lee is going to pull out something that's some crazy trick or yusaki it's just, it's a sight to be seen this whole finale and i love the outdoors a lot of the movie is shot indoors on the shaw set and to have this fight scene i can't i think it's called by clear lake i can't remember the lake they're fighting by by in the movie but this one you got to see this whole movie um don't just watch this fight scene on its own because it's it's one of the best ever made sometimes it's my favorite kung fu movie no one even well spoiler alert 40 years later but no one dies in this movie and it's just about the pure martial arts of it all and it has a great storyline and gordon Liu shines in it it's a 1978 classic in the finale it'll it'll impress you you got to see it coming in at number three is the greatest weapons finale in kung fu cinema in my opinion of course and it's massed avengers 
uh, Chang Che classic Venom mob movie. I'm a huge Venom's fan. I saw this in 1986 on Samurai Sunday when I my we lived in Flemington, New Jersey, and I would watch it on Philly 57, and uh, it changed my life. I can't believe how violent this was to be on television as well. Uh, I remember taking this uh, movie to my friend's house maybe a year later. We were seven or eight, and it was this finale, and uh, my friend's dad came in, and he saw just the trident just stabbing through some guy, and I remember he said, turn this off. <laughs> and at the time, I did know it was pretty violent, but looking back, I, I guess for a seven or eight-year-old, uh, it probably seemed pretty b bad to my friend's dad and it's still pretty violent to this day but it, it doesn't really com it pales compared to like horror movies of course um, it does this movie does have some horror leanings and it's a great build up to this finale G Guac Choi it was a member of this murderous gang but they didn't know what the identity of the other leaders were and that's what makes this finale have just such uh, an extra level to it when Chu Ko comes down this like elevator system if you will and Guac Choi and him face off well actually after Chu Ko does one of the most amazing displays with the trident uh, the finale just it blows up I mean the whole thing is amazing and you got Lu Fang Chang Shang Guac Choi just and that's the thing a lot of the venoms movies have tons of acrobatics and peking opera and this is like a different has a different flair to it because it's way more weapon usage you get the in the trident i mean i don't know you rarely see that in kung fu movies this movie like represents the trident and when i was young i'd still love to have it i'd love to have the leader style trident which like i guess all the underlings in the mass gang they have the silver tridents but the leaders have these red spiral trident on the staff and then the top of it's golden and it's pretty cool. It's actually in, if you see my martial arts theater 3000 logo, that's like the main display there because I wanted that in because I love this movie so much. So you got to see Masked Avengers. It's a Venom mob, I'd say definitely in their top three and for fight scenes, this finale just blows away anything, especially when it comes to weapon usage. Coming in at number two, we have my favorite martial arts actor of all time. He needs no introduction. Uh, this is the dojo scene from Fist of Fury. We knew it in the States as Chinese Connection. And this is kind of like the go-to answer. I've seen a lot of people say, like, the best fight scene of all time. This and one I have in the honorable mentions here coming up. Uh, it's almost kind of like the go-to answer of your favorite drummer. If someone says John Bonham, which I definitely would agree with on most days. And there's a reason people say these things. This movie and this fight scene in particular, it's, it was so groundbreaking. And it, I believe it's the first like well-known scene that has Nunchaku on screen. And if you can take a moment to imagine seeing this in 1972 on the big screen when people wouldn't be familiar with that weapon like they are today, which has been in hundreds of movies since, it, I mean, it's still jaw-dropping to see how much of a master Bruce is using that weapon but to see it back then it's almost hard to imagine and this whole fight scene it's Bruce versus tons of Japanese fighters in their dojo after I mean his teacher was killed he brings in this sign that they brought to him to add insult to injury after his Sifu's death and the sign said sick men of Asia so he brings it back to their dojo single-handedly and everything about this just drips the best i mean it's, i would put this at the best fight scene of all time i did put a, a different number one and that's kind of the conundrum with picking a top five it could switch this on most days could be my number one but uh bruce is is it's all he has that fred astaire ballet aspect um to his movements it's so beautiful to see and that coupled with his sheer ferocity it just that's almost what makes bruce bruce and at the end of the scene, he feeds, he breaks the sign open and feeds it to the Japanese fighter and makes him eat it. And this is almost just the beginning of his rage through the entire movie. But this scene on its own, you got to see it in the context of the movie, but just to show it to someone, it defines the genre. 
And coming in at number one, we have the finale of Drunken Master 2. This fight scene, it's so long. It's like 20 to 30 minutes long. It took them... I haven't read Jackie Chan's autobiography in a while, but from what I remember, it was, I think, three to four months to film. And it shows there's just so much going on in this scene. And it's... This is... I often refer to this movie as kind of the end, in my mind, in a lot of ways, the end of an era. For a decade plus prior to this, Jackie had been doing so many modern day setting kung fu movies. And this is a throwback to that traditional era. And it has Lar Carlong and him co-directing maybe two thirds of the movie. But by the time it got to the finale, Lar Carlong had left the project and uh, Jackie took over. So the fights that were under the dual direction of the two of them have even a more traditional style, I'd say. This has the tradition, but it also is just Jackie through and through. And gosh, he throws in everything in this movie and in this finale. And it's, <laughs> you have to see it to believe it. The whole movie has so many great fight scenes. I could have easily put the fight scene with Lau Carlong and him in the upstairs of that restaurant from earlier in the film. That one will also blow your socks off. But definitely get Drunken Master 2. It was known in the States as Legend of Drunken Master. It's kind of complex to go into what the differences are. I have a video, if you check it out on my channel, that breaks down the differences between the two movies. But get, seek out Drunken Master 2 because it has the original soundtrack, the original sound effects of the fight itself. Um, everything was kind of altered in that one. And uh, this one is the superior original version. And the main villain at the end here, Ken Lo, was Jackie Chan's real life bodyguard and a member of his stunt team. And he's a great villain. And gosh, his, kick, his kicking is crazy, his flexibility. Jackie has, it was hard not to put him on three of these top five. His fight scenes just go above and beyond. And if you take all his fight scenes and stunt work and everything, this is like a combination of it all and then raises it up another level and you can almost feel that he just threw everything at this just the intricacies of all the hand-to-hand -hand combat and then there's him falling into the flames <laughs> and it's classic Jackie because he's always getting his butt whooped and he's he always takes the hits and everything and you see him find that little key that's going to make him turn the tides and it's not well it's sometimes kind of instant but it bewilders the villain and jackie gets more strength and he builds and builds and in this one he starts drinking this industrial alcohol and he turns into like a superman it's almost a throwback to <laughs> big trouble in little china when they drink that elixir i mean he just goes like crazy <laughs> You got to see it. Definitely check out Drunken Master 2. In my opinion, the greatest fight scene of all time, hands down. And because it's so difficult to pick a top five, I of course have three honorable mentions that almost made the list. We have Bruce Lee versus Chuck Norris in the Colosseum in Rome at the end of Way of the Dragon, also known as Return of the Dragon. It, it was so hard not to include that one. We have Michelle Yeoh and Cynthia Rothrock in Yes, Madam. That fight scene is ferocious. Another one I almost that almost made the list. The next one would be Five Elements Ninjas, Chang Che's classic from 1982. That finale of that one when they busted out the stilts, that blew my mind when I first saw that. Yeah, so definitely check out these honorable mentions as well. All right, guys, that's my top five. Hong Kong fight scenes of all time. Let me know down below in the comments your top five, number one being the best. And definitely check out the other YouTube channels that I collaborated with for this video in our little group called the Asian Cinema Circle. I'll put their videos they did of their top five Hong Kong fight scenes down in the description box below. And thanks guys so much for all your support and I'll catch you in the next one.